we lost him so soon. <laughs> just out of the sun, like he was taking uh, away from us. As you just heard, a family torn apart by a man with a history of driving drunk. And once again, Milwaukee is mourning the death of a brave Milwaukee police officer. Milwaukee District Attorney John Chisholm joins us live now this morning to talk about that case a little bit and some other issues. And John, thanks so much for being with us this morning. No, it's my honor, Susan. Uh, well, let's talk about the case with Officer Her, the driver of that vehicle, 34 years, years old, with a history of OWI convictions. At this point, do you know, was he drunk at the time of the crash um, hitting Officer Her, and where does your office stand on charges? So at this moment, it's still in the active investigation phase. So an uh, individual that we believe is responsible for this was arrested, and um, he was taken to the hospital. Um, blood was so we would anticipate finding out um, uh, evidence that would support that, that conclusion one way or the other uh, within the next day or so. So uh, obviously uh, this is going to be reviewed and we do anticipate issuing charges relatively soon. John, police have not released to us the name of the suspect, but uh, Police Chief Alfonso Morales did tell us that he has four prior OWI convictions and was on probation for his most recent. He could have been behind bars and I'm looking at my social media and it's all people asking the question, how is this person still out on the street? Was it a judge that was too lenient? Did your office not prosecute aggressively enough? What happened here? No, we always take uh, particularly the drunk driving cases extraordinarily seriously. Milwaukee County has a reputation for being one of the toughest counties when it comes to drunk driving. And obviously we aggressively prosecuted this case. At the end of the day, the sentencing decision um, falls to the judge. They have to weigh a number of factors and uh, in this particular case, the decision was made. I believe that um, he was sentenced to a full year uh, in the jail, and then he had additional time placed over him. So um, as it stands right now, there is a likelihood that um, he will, in fact, be going to prison for a substantial amount of time, even on the prior ones. So um, yeah, that, that accountability issue is, is an important one. But from our perspective, we always um, put the public safety issue first and foremost and aggressively prosecute these Would you cases. have liked to have seen him locked up longer in this particular case? You know, it's, it's always hindsight's 2020 is what they always okay. say. And I, I am always, you know, I do my job and I, I leave it to the judges to do their jobs. And then as a result of this crash, would you like to see stronger drunk driving laws here? Well, here's the interesting thing that I have found, and that is that particularly when you're dealing with the individuals that are getting their second and their third, uh, those are the individuals that you really have to pay attention to because they're, they're the ones that obviously are not going to stop, and they're the ones that you have to look more towards incapacitation, unfortunately. You have to get them off the streets. We've actually seen an increase in our prison population in, in the last several years um, on, related to the drunk driving offenses throughout the state. John, we're running out of time, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to address also the five-year-old who was shot and killed. It appears to be an accident where somebody found a gun, but again, you have a gun that's loaded and a kid had access to it. Uh, how can you address that from a prosecutorial standpoint? Right. Once that tragedy occurs, you can't unring that bell. Right. So what we focus on is, is there anything you could do to prevent it? And I actually believe that there are ways, particularly incorporating technology, um, that would make it easier to um, have access to a firearm when you believe you need it, um, but would prevent the accidental discharge of a firearm that results in the tragedies re relating to kids. And so we've worked with groups in Milwaukee like Common Ground that do not stand idly by initiative to um, to promote smart gun technology that would actually prevent tragic incidents like this you know prosecuting somebody after their kid is is accidentally killed themselves um, isn't going to solve the problem what can prevent it though is if people are really uh, thoughtful and responsible about how they safely store their firearms. So no charges for the parents in this case? I, I don't know that answer right now. Uh, we have to evaluate all the facts, um, but we certainly have issued charges against uh, individuals in circumstances like this. But our, our primary goal is let's prevent these in the first place. All right, John Chisholm, thanks so much for your time this morning. Glad to do it. Yep. Appreciate it.